Here we have a um, standard Platinum GameCube and a couple of basic tools. We've got a screwdriver and a clear Bic pen. What I'm going to show you is some tips on installing a GameCube mod chip and tweaking your laser. Um, if you did a soft mod, you might notice that some of the discs don't read properly, so you might have to do a laser adjustment. I'll show you how to get into the GameCube and adjust that. So anyway, um, the GameCube actually has these proprietary screws. Now, if you're not going to actually buy a mod chip and you did a soft mod, you're going to have to figure out how to take the screws out. The number one method is, um, it's called the pen method. You go get a clear Bic pen, remove the ink, and with a, a lighter, or over your stove, you heat up the tip of this, go into your cube, while it's still hot and gooey, mash it all the way into the bottom and let it set. After a couple of seconds, the plastic will harden around the screw, and you can use this to pull the screws out. Um, you'll have to keep heating the pen up every single time you want to do a new screw. Don't let the pen heat up too much or set on fire, and try not to catch the pen on the sides of the shaft, because if, it, if you get molten plastic in there, it's really hard to get it, to get it out. Okay? I already took the screws out and I replaced it with standard. These are everyday screws. I don't know where I got them. They were just laying in my parts bin. Okay. Once you take the, uh, the screws out, it's just a matter of many, many, many layers inside the cube. Right here is my GameCube mod chip. This is a Viper GameCube regular. There's also the Viper GameCube Extreme chip. This is, uh, I think it has 128K of memory. Relatively basic. Okay, the first thing you want, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my chip. Okay. And we are going to start getting into the core of the cube. We've got two little clips right here. Let's see, let me turn this around for you. Two little clips here and here that are used for removing the controllers. Oh, got to take the cards out. And this hinges forward. Okay. You'll notice there's uh, screws here, 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 here. Got one here, one here, one here, one here, 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 and here. Okay? Standard Phillips head screwdriver. Start taking them apart. Okay, now we've removed the fan, remove the fan, the main power switch, this is main from the power supply, pretend this isn't here because this is all from, uh, from my mod chip which I'll explain later. Um, you can just pull, put a little bit of pressure and pull this out, be very careful not to put pressure on these, these pins over here, if this cable rips you'll have no controllers. Here's your reset button, right here, here's your CMOS battery for your BIOS, and here's all the connectors for your GameCube controllers. Put that aside. Now you'll notice that once you take this panel off, there's going to be some screws over here. Just take those out. And you might want to take off the, um, the lid sensor switch. Once you take the fan off, you'll notice that there's three more screws over here. Remember how all of these screws go in, because if you don't remember, in the end, you're going to wind up forgetting to put screws in, or you put them in the wrong order, and the console will not go back together properly. When dealing with the lid sensor over here, be very, very careful on these wires. They're very fragile, and if you break them, then you're going to be screwed. Don't break them. Okay. Once you take all the screws out, lift straight up on the optical drive. It should come right out. Okay. This is where the GameCube mod chip is installed. You actually have to take the heat sink to the, um, to the CPU and the GPU off and install one wire. 
that one wire, it's on a pad that's comparable to one of these. I'll use my camera, I'll zoom in a little bit and see if I can get a, a nice accurate shot of all these connections. Okay, those are all the connections. They're fairly easy. As you notice, they're all pre-tinned. And if you see the, uh, let me use one of my multimeter probes here. If you notice that these wires here, there's actually a chip underneath here with a solder point roughly this big. So if you don't think you can solder onto something that's this size, I would recommend you don't try this. To be honest, as long as you have a steady hand, it's fairly easy. You really shouldn't have anything to worry about. All right, here's the laser assembly. Yay. We're going to need multimeter. If you notice, there's a couple of screws around here. Of course, take them off. Now take the heat shielding off and the RF shielding. And you will notice a very, 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 very tiny potentiometer right here. Here is the potentiometer, also known as VR40. You're going to need a multimeter, an ohmmeter to be precise. Normally, this will come between uh, 170 to 310 ohms in resistance. You want it to be somewhere between, I would say, uh, 160 to 210. Now, you'll have to put one probe on the single lead, and then there'll be a mark right here that says VR40. I doubt you can actually see it with, uh, after the encode of this video, but use this as your reference on the other leg that you actually have to have to test. I'll turn my multimeter on real quick, and I'll get a current reading of my resistance. Okay, put one here, one here. Mine's reading 208, 207.4, roughly. About between 200, it's, it's fluxing around between 206 and 207. Okay, when you adjust this, okay, look at the size of my finger. Look at the size of the tip of this pen in comparison to this potentiometer. It is very small. So you're going to need a very, very small screwdriver to make this adjustment. Even just tapping on this will actually adjust its, uh, adjust its value. So be very, very, very careful. I'm going to go ahead off camera and I'm going to adjust mine close to, say, 195, maybe 190, and then I'm going to go and uh, put my cube back together and t test to see if it's, if it's booting other disks. If your ranges are too out of whack, you'll be putting a little bit too much stress on your laser and run the risk of actually burning it out or wearing it down faster. So, you've been warned. The GameCube is nearly all together. All I have to do now is put the controller ports back in, but I wanted to show you my GameCube mod chip, also known as the Viper GameCube. This is one of the earlier revisions, and only it doesn't have all too much memory, and it's got a lot of features and a lot of benefits. Some of those are customizable BIOSes, different bootloaders, has a built-in action replay cheat code functionality, and um, I love it. I'd love to get the uh, Viper Extreme soon and show you guys that one, but in due time. When you install the chip, there's a small little piece of the shielding right over here that's supposed to be bent upwards. I just broke it off. And this is the connector. These actually interface into the, uh, these wires right here actually interface into the, uh, the GameCube's system bus. These wires over here lead all the way around to the lid sensor switch right here. That way you can actually go into this chip and to the settings and if you don't have a custom GameCube case, which is something I forgot to show you, this case actually supports full-size discs. So if you actually plan on using the original GameCube case and you want to put in original discs, um, the original discs only take up about to here, but original uh, backups or DVD-ROMs will actually be out to here. You know what? There you go. There you go. This will not fit in a standard uh, GameCube case. Yes, you can take a standard GameCube case and take a, a cutting tool and cut all this out, but I think that destroys all resale value, and you lose the eject button. You can no longer eject the lid. You'll have to go and use some kind of Velcro or something. This, um, this case, this alternate case right here, 
only cost about $20. It was a very cheap run-of-the-mill brand. It actually came with a sticker that you could put over here to replicate the Nintendo logo or your own custom and even give give you one where you can print out your own custom logo. Of course, if